Hi guys, um, my name is Debarco Das, as you can see. Uh, I go by Didi, and last year, uh, some of you might have heard of this, I, I hacked the Indian education system, and I want to tell you a little bit more about it. But first, I want to tell you a little story, a little personal story very close to my heart. I went to high school in Calcutta. I, I know the accent doesn't sound like it, but I went to high school in Calcutta, and when I went to high school, I had, my best friend was this guy called Tintin. And Tintin kind of embodies everything that the, the Indian teenager today is. He hated school. He absolutely hated it. He'd go every day, teachers who are unqualified would read off page after page of textbook and it was boring and he didn't like it. He liked music, of course. He, he loved to play the guitar. He was extremely good at playing the guitar. But even more than music, I think, the coolest thing about Tintin is he really liked sound. He liked acoustic engineering. He really wanted to do something in that, in that field. But unfortunately, class 10 came around. He didn't do very well. He didn't get science. He got commerce. He didn't like commerce very much. Um, in class 11, he failed. In class 12, very unfortunately, he passed away in a very tragic accident. And um, what can you do? See, education is something very dear to India. We all know that. You pick up an average paper, this is what comes up. This is, after, I just Googled something. Two months, two months of news, and this is what comes up. Education is huge in India. It's, a, it's your road up the social ladder is education. And it's not done well, and people like Tintin every day crumble under the pressure of the Indian education system, and many others face its challenges, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about that. Overall, in my talk, I'm gonna tell you about what I did last year. I'm gonna tell you that and some other problems with the Indian education system, and I wanna tell you that we can actually solve this problem. We have solved this problem, and how we can bring it forward into India. You see, let me first start with how, how education works in India, for those of you who don't know. You go to school, teacher reads page after page for 10, 10, 15 years. You get to class 10, you give your boards, you regurgitate all the information. Um, and the boards are a big deal because the boards are a national thing. It's, sometimes it's a state thing. It's either the ICSC, the CBSC, um, your state boards. You give your board exam. And then you expect a 16-year-old who gave his board exam to decide what he wants to do in life. He doesn't know anything about life. He's worried about his girlfriend. And you tell him whether you want, whether he wants to study science or commerce and humanities and all these tough words that he doesn't even know what half of them mean. And then after he does that, two years after class 10, after class 12, he gives another one of these board exams. After he regurgitates all that information that he learned, and based on that one mark that he gets, the one result in his class 12 board exams, that decides his future. That decides which college he goes to. Most arts, science, business colleges, as you all know, they only want your class 12 board results. For engineering, it's a little better, sure. You also have an entrance test. So in addition to high school, you take tuition and then do that as well. And for law and medicine, it's, it's just bizarre. You don't even need to go to high school. You, you study for your entrance exam, you become a lawyer or a doctor. It's absolutely fragmented. It's absolutely bizarre how the Indian education system works. This, this comic, I really like this comic. It kind of demonstrates what the Indian education does to you. It kills your creativity. It kills everything that you're passionate about. See, Indian, India doesn't really have an education system at all. It has an examination system. That's what it has. There's, there's, there's a funny joke. There's two types of knowledge in India. There's knowledge that's in the syllabus, and there's things you don't need to know. And the ends always justify the means. It's whatever, at the end of the day, no one cares if you've learned anything. You come back home, your mother doesn't ask you if you learned anything. They ask you one question. How much did you get? <laughs> did you get 100 in math? <laughs> no. <laughs> and so last year, I did this really cool thing. And to be honest, I, I wasn't trying to change the world. I just wanted to do something cool. And I hacked into the Indian education system and I downloaded over a million students' results from the CBSC, the ISC, the ICSC, and I did some analysis on them. 
and I found some great, great flaws. Some of them you already know. Some of them were just conspiracy theories that you never knew could be proved. And I think I, I might have proved some of them. So you know big data, right? We're in Bangalore. We're in the tech capital of India. Big data is a big tech buzzword. And, and big data is what happens when you have a lot of information. And it's really hard to deal with a lot of information because it's just a lot of numbers and you need to make sense of it. And with the computing power we have today, we can make sense of these big, big numbers. And companies do it all the time. For example, I'll, I'll give you an example. In, at Facebook, you can detect images. You can detect faces in images. You are all on Facebook. You all know this. You, that image detection algorithm can detect faces better than humans. 98% accuracy. And then cheating. We have algorithms that can detect cheating more than any other teacher. If, you're, if, you've, if you copied from Wikipedia, they know. And we've all done it. And so when I had all this data, right, a million students, it's a very big number to even imagine, a million students and all their results, how do you process this? What, what can you find out of this information? My problem was much, much easier than all, all these big guys, Facebook and everything. And so I did some stuff, and I want to tell you what I found out. You see, first things first, privacy, right? No one really thinks about it. In fact, after I published this, the only lectures of privacy I got were from the American people. You know, you're, you're, how can you do this? This is, this is horrible. How, how are these results up in the open? And the thing is, India has a culture of public shaming and praising on Marx, right? Hey guys, you're, you're not a statistic, you're not a number. You're not, you, don't, you don't deserve to be put on a chronological list of how you did at school. That is not your true self-worth. It's not. And the fact that all these numbers are open, you just go online, you, you type in your number, you get your IC, IC result, right? You type in your number, add one to it, you get your friend's number. And then you're like, oh, I, I, he did better than me, I, I'm, I'm horrible. And that's something we need to, we, that's the first thing I think we need to fix. But you know, in, in, in one way, I'm pretty happy that this wasn't private, because I'll tell you some more things. Don't, don't try to make too much sense of this. In the CBSC, CBSC is a standardized test, right? A lot of people give the CBSC. And with standardized tests, you're supposed to have a standardized distribution. Not exactly like this, but this is the SAT distribution. So that's how the marks as for each column, vertical column on that graph, the number of students who get it, the higher the green line, the more number of students who got that. And it's a continuous graph. It looks really nice, right? And that's how most, most standardized exams are. And then that's the CBSC graph. Do you know what, you know what the first hump is? It's the pass mark, right? And <laughs> I've told people this, and they're like, yeah, yeah, that's obvious. Hey, yeah, grace marks, right? Yeah, no big deal. There's 5% of our, our, our country that we're passing, and they don't deserve to pass. And they all think they're lucky. You know, I did well, and I just passed. They, they didn't pass. They were passed. And the second hump is even worse, right? The second hump is 95. And that's, that's elite colleges. That's what it depends on. Why is it there? I don't know. But that can't be there. It's a statistical inaccuracy. The probability of that humping there is so low that you could expect to be murdered tonight, and you, that's, that, that probability would be higher than this. Yeah, I got that right. I, I want to show you some more things. Um, come on, Bangalore is full of engineers, right? Tell me what this sequence of numbers or this group of numbers represents. What's common between all these numbers? In, in the ISC 2014, if you ask any of your friends, you know, any of your friends who gave the ISC, ask them how much they got in any subject. They won't tell you, but you know, if they do tell you, they won't have got these marks. Strange, right? Why wouldn't anyone get a 93? No one got a 93. No one got any of these marks in 2014. 60,000 people gave this exam. Five subjects each. In no subject, in no, in no year, even this year and last year, nobody attained these marks. It makes no sense. What's going on? And I think I have a hypothesis, right? So it, it can't be. These marks happened. Some teacher somewhere in India gave these marks. Something happened to it. It was changed. It's horrible. It's a horrible thing to do. And that, your life depends on this, right? I, I want to tell you something about the butterfly effect. I find this concept fascinating. There's a movie about it, too. The butterfly effect is when, in a deterministic system, a small change, you don't have to understand, a small change in the set of initial events changes the, the outcome in the end. I'll give you an example. Imagine in India, a woman goes to work, you know, has a bad day at work, comes home, screams at her husband, and her husband is very angry, and he has to grade all these exams. 
and he, he's an ISC exam grader, and you know, he just wants to make the most money, he wants to get rid of all these exams quickly, go to sleep, takes out this pile of 100 papers, and it's about English papers, and he's, he's, he's really angry, and he marks them low. Bad mood. Changed so many lives in that day. It happens. I have data to prove that this happens. In English, in the CBSE, in the ISC, from year to year, the averages of each school change by more than 5 to 7%. It all depends on who's correcting it, right? All of that decides your future, decides which college you go to. This is, this is another really interesting comic I came into. And a lot of people don't think of this, right? Because when you give, when you offer these subjects to kids, and you, you're graded on the same benchmark, you're graded on the absolute number you get in the end, and you offer all these different subjects, so you would assume that in all the subjects it's equally hard to get a 95 and an 85 and everything. But that's not true. In fact, in both the boards, depending on which subjects you take, it can make a 30% difference in your grade. 30%. That's the difference between going to the best college in India and not going to a college anywhere. The subject choices, right? I thought of this last night. Have you heard of the Daft Punk song? <laughs> We're up all night to get lucky. <laughs> That's basically the Indian education system in a nutshell. <laughs> It's incredible. Our, our lives, our lives are in the hand of fate. You know, you didn't. Sarthak Agarwal got 99.6. The reason he did was he was lucky. There were people who deserved it. They didn't get it. He got the right graders, and it's great. But are we really going to let the lives of our future youth depend on luck? I don't think so. I think we have, we have a solution for this. A lot of people don't agree with me. But right now, I work at Coursera. And in Coursera, does online education. And you might think of online education as, oh, a lot of videos and what, whatever. But it's, it's a lot more than that. See, MOOCs are massive on open online classes. And MOOCs can take the luck out of any education system. And they have been. At Coursera, I work with three people on my team who never went to college. They were passionate about what they did. And it's not just in America. EdX, Coursera, Udacity are changing education across the world. Some of you might recognize some of these universities, right? Can you imagine 10 years ago, from your bedroom, you know, you're going to sleep, you're lying on bed with a laptop, you can learn for free from people who went to Berkeley, Berkeley College of Music. John Mayer went to Berkeley College of Music. You can learn from the same people who taught John Mayer in your bedroom. People who didn't study math at Princeton, you know, Fields Medal winners, Nobel laureates at University of Chicago teaching economics, you can learn anything from the greatest professor in the world. You just have to open your computer. And I think, I think that's amazing. I want to show you some, some little facts and, and figures. There's 170,000 IIT alumni. You know, IIT is always the benchmark, right? There's 170,000 IIT alumni in total in all their history in India. Actually, I think everywhere. Right now, in two years at, at Coursera, there's four times that amount already. And there's more potential. There's 130 million internet users. We can educate a 130 million people. So scalable. And it works. It works. You know why, why it works? I'll tell you. This, this wasn't the slide I had yesterday. This guy, I, I met this guy yesterday. His name is Pankaj. He's in the audience somewhere. I want, I want first, let me tell you about him, and then you can give him a round of applause. Pankaj, you know, typical story, you know, he hated class. Everyone hates class. He went to Bombay, he studied, he did his degree in business or whatever. He didn't care about it. And then he discovered online education, right? It transformed him. He's a CEO and founder. At 22, he manages people and he runs his business. He designed these slides. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> You know, a few weeks ago, Joseph Stiglitz, he's an economic Nobel laureate, he came to Coursera and he said something that really struck me. He said, we still live in a world today where the greatest gift you can have is choosing the right parents to be born to. If you really think about it, that, that's so true. What our parents can do for us it decides our whole future. It's all luck, even from the very beginning. And there's a very famous talk by Ken Robinson, also of TED, and he says, 
high, high quality education is a fundamental human right. High quality being the operative words here. High quality education. And I want to leave you with one thought. You know, I want you guys to go home, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, discover your passion, go online, take some classes, really learn for the sake of learning, and I assure you, you will get somewhere in life. Challenge, don't stop complaining about the system. We all complain, we love to complain about the system. And look at what today has taught us, the ugly Indian, Naresh, Narasim, and they're so beautiful, because they're challenging the system. I want you guys to go challenge education. Thank you. Thank you.